Hey, it's Jen for Tested here to show you a little trick that I use for taking my physical prototypes and transferring them into the digital realm and then into the physical realm again. Uh, so this is a process that I've used in uh, a bunch of different projects that I made. They've come up a couple times in different tested videos, uh, but I wanted to focus on the specific piece of the process because it's not something that I've gone into much detail before, but it's super useful and I pretty much employ it on every single thing that I prototype. So the way that I usually get started uh, is by drawing out my idea in the sketchbook. Um, starts off looking like something like this. Um, I will usually draw the object or the thing that I'm trying to make. And from the sketchbook, I will then make a uh, physical prototype. Uh, I have a whole video about the process from sketchbook to prototype to finish product. Um, so you can check that out for more information about that whole process. Uh, but for this piece, I want to focus on um, taking these little cardboard or foam core uh, shapes and taking them into the computer so that they can then be laser cut or CNC uh, machined, however you plan to manufacture them. So I want to take this because I know that all of the dimensions on this are exactly what I want to fit my light. And I want to transfer this so that I can laser cut the pieces. The easiest way that I've found to do that is to actually take a photograph of the prototype uh, that I've created against something that I can use as a reference for scale. So in this case, I'm using uh, one of these little gridded cutting mats. These are super handy because they have all of your um, lines and measurements already on them. If you don't have a gridded cutting mat, you can also just use a ruler, anything that has uh, measurements um, that you can place next to the object as a uh, sort of reference point. So what I'll do is take the prototype or the drawing or whatever uh, sort of flat lay of the surface I'm trying to recreate and place it onto the cutting mat or next to my ruler. Now this part is important um, because you want to make sure that it's easy to sort of reference that scale once you get it into the computer. So I want to make sure that the object is placed as sort of straight and perpendicular to the lines as I can get it. I can also see here that a little bit of um, lift is happening. That's going to affect the sort of distortion of the shapes in the digital uh, program. So I want to make sure this is flat. I'm just going to use a little piece of tape to make sure this stays nice and um, flat. This seems like it's pretty flat, mostly. And then I'm going to take my phone, you can use a camera, whatever you use to take pictures. And I'm going to take a picture of my object from as close to a perfect bird's eye view as I can get. So you'll see I'm holding the phone directly over the object. Uh, I don't want to tilt in either direction. I want to make sure that all of the grid lines um, on the mat are parallel and everything is in perfect sort of flat perspective. I'll go ahead and take that photo. You can even, if your uh, phone or your camera has a uh, grid tool, you can even turn that on to help line that up um, with the photo that you're taking. So from the photograph, I'm going to then send that over to the computer where we'll pick up and I'll show you what to do next. So I have my software open. I'm using Adobe Illustrator. Uh, you can use Inkscape or any type of vector software for this. And I'm just going to open uh, the photo that I just took in Illustrator. And I want to do a couple things to the photo first. Um, I want to make sure that all of my grid lines uh, are sort of running parallel. If any of them look like they're sort of um, foreshortening or, or angling off in a certain direction, I don't want to use that photo. I want to make sure this is perfect bird's eye view, um, everything's nice and straight. Otherwise you'll get distortion in the actual shape. The next thing I'm going to do is to draw a square over top of my grid squares or over the markings on your ruler. So I'm going to zoom in for this so I can show you what I'm doing. This is all going to make sense in a minute, I promise, just follow along. So I'm taking a square and for my purposes I'm going to draw a one inch square. And by one inch, I'm using the visual reference of the grid that's on the mat or the marking on the ruler to get that one inch. I'm not drawing a one inch square in the program. So I'm going to go as close as I can to the very edge of these grid lines. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag a square. 
And I can see now, because the square is definitely straight up and down, that my grid lines are ever so slightly shifted. So I want to take the uh, whole photo and I want to rotate it just a touch to make sure that it's straight. So if I zoom back in, you can see the square now lines up pretty well. Now I also want to make sure that this is in fact a square. So I've got uh, two different dimensions here. You can also do this by holding shift. So I'll just show you that real quick. If I begin drawing a square and I hold shift, it will constrain the proportion to be uh, equal on both directions. So I've got my square in a position as close as I can to that grid line. It's also sometimes helpful here um, if you don't have a stroke. And I've also found that using a different color and changing the transparency is also helpful. So I'm going over here to my color picker. We'll just pick a fluorescent purple. And I'm going to lower the opacity so I can see through to my grid. And that looks pretty close. I don't want it to go right up to the edges because the actual line is sort of somewhere in the middle. So here's my square, it's equal um, proportions. Now, this is here's the trick, this is the trick part. I'm going to take this number, whatever size the square is, because what we're looking at right now is a representation of a one inch square, which is not actually one inch in the software, it's 0.8703 inches in the software. Now we're gonna take that number and we're going to divide 100 by that number. So go ahead into your, uh, into your calculator and enter 100 and divide it by the value of the size of that square. So 0 0.8703. And this number, what comes up, so I've got 114.902907. This is the percentage that we're going to scale the image up to be the actual size that it should be in real life. So watch this. I'm going to select both the square and the photo and I can just hit shift and click both of those items. So I've grabbed both and now I'm going to scale them. So you can find this up in the uh, transform menu or you can right click on it and I'm gonna go down to scale. This may be in a different place depending on which program you're using but you should be able to uh, transform your objects using the scale function somewhere in your program. Um, now I wanna make sure that I have this selected to uniform. I wanna make sure that it's scaling proportionally. And I'm gonna go back to that number, that 114.9, et cetera, percent. And this is the number that I'm gonna enter in there for my scale. So 114.902. Enter as many decimal points as it will let you because that's gonna get you as close to precision as possible. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And you can see in the software, it has scaled up the whole photograph um, by 114%. Now, here's how we can check if we did it correctly. I'm gonna click off here and I'm gonna go back and click on my pink square, which if we did this correctly, should be exactly one inch by one inch. So what we've just done is taken a photo into the computer and made what's happening in real life match what the software thinks. So now everything that I put into this design is going to match the scale in real life. This is important when you're making a one-to-one -one prototype, but you could also use this for other scales um, as long as you do the conversion. Uh, if you wanted to work on something that was huge and you wanted to uh, make a design that was a smaller version, you can just use a factor of that scale and make it work. Um, for my purposes, I then went ahead and traced on top of this. Um, knowing that I cut this shape out by hand, it's not going to be perfectly symmetrical. So what I actually did was to draw on top of uh, two of the fins and then replicate them for the other side so that the whole thing is fully symmetrical. And for this center ring, I actually just used a circle tool in the software to make sure that it would be an exact perfect circle with the inner diameter and the outer diameter that I was looking for to fit on the spotlight. Uh, I can show you real quick what that looks like in Illustrator. It's often easiest to work with um, like primitive shapes. 
And it's very helpful to set uh, transparencies on these as well. So we'll just lower the opacity on that. I can get rid of my one inch square. So I can align um, all of these points to one another. And basically all I'm doing is tracing over top of the drawing that I made um, because I like the shape of that. I know that it works in physical space and I'm going to replicate that shape using exact measurements, which I can do digitally. Um, so basically that hand drawing is just a reference in some cases where I have done an object that's more organic, perhaps it's a tree or a piece of scenery or something, it doesn't need to be very precise. It's more sort of decorative. Um, in those cases, I will actually just trace the drawing itself. Um, and there is a function uh, with an illustrator, which I can show you, um, that will allow you to sort of replicate your exact drawing and then use that uh, for laser cutting. So let's finish up this shape here. And this is basically just a process of adding and subtracting shapes. At least this is how, um, how I do it. And then we can create a circle here for the center. Now I would want to use um, the exact dimensions. Um, I could even, uh, because I measured these, I could even create a box that's this exact size and work from that. Um, but having the photograph on the grid mat um, sort of precludes the need to enter the actual numbers. So here I'm just adding and subtracting uh, nodes. And there are certainly ways to do this that are more um, precise than what I'm showing right now, but you get the idea. So you can see I've got I've got one of my fins, I've got the center ring, and um, and I can go about my layout in this way. So I'll take these uh, shapes, I will change them into uh, vectors for laser cutting, well, they're technically already vectors. I'll change them into outlines for laser cutting. And uh, depending on what kind of uh, laser cutter software you use um, or CNC machining software, uh, you will need to export the file at the type that uh, your machine reads. In this case, um, I'm gonna send these over to our laser and cut the pieces out of plywood. All right, so I've got my laser cut parts. They look pretty good. 
Um, I did cut, and this is something to consider when you're, when you're making objects to fit something that already exists. Um, there are certain fixed variables. So in this case, the metal ring around the edge of the spotlight is not, is not going to change. It's not, it doesn't have any give. So because of that and various considerations like the kerf of the laser, um, I went ahead and cut uh, a bunch of different sizes of this inner ring, um, varying a few thou uh, in the inner diameter and also the outer diameter, and just giving me some options so that I could see what would press fit comfortably onto there. So I figured out the size that worked and I have all of my fins. And you can see they're pretty spot on. The shape is there, the scale is right, and there you have it. Uh, the transfer from a flat cardboard shape into digital and laser cut pieces. And then we have our final, our final design, which totally works and is the correct size. That's just a uh, little trick for taking um, prototypes into digital format uh, so that you can replicate them. Uh, hopefully it's been helpful to you. Uh, if you have any other ideas on how to do this, um, how to take prototypes into uh, a final product, let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.